This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. This story is kind of a combination of like uh, Catch Me If You Can and Aileen Wernos. In a lot of ways, it's a love triangle accompanied by multi-state and then into another country search with U.S. Marshals and mistaken identity, fake identity, and then trying to create a new identity. We are talking about the case against Caitlin Armstrong. She is the individual who is accused of murdering her boyfriend's friend at the time. And I say friend at the time, not lover, because they weren't lovers when this murder took place. But there was a lot of jealousy and a lot of rage in Caitlin that her boyfriend, Colin Strickland, was spending time, uh, who's a professional cyclist, with another professional cyclist, his friend, Anna Mariah Mo Wilson, who was in Austin for a race uh, in 2021. Uh, it all took place on June 11th of that year uh, when Mariah was in town for a race, going around seeing friends like one would do when you're in a city that you're not normally in, but you have friends there. Uh, well, Mariah was there and Caitlin was still seeing Colin and had some insight that, you know, at one point in time, they might have kind of had a thing when we weren't together. And that's what the boyfriend says as well. But still a little bit paranoid. Paranoid to the point of stalking her boyfriend and Anna Mariah Mo Wilson through a tracking app on her cell phone. It's an app that a lot of cyclists use, uh, which is designed to really show routes that cyclists take in used incorrectly uh, or nefariously. You can also track where people are going. Uh, and she's watching this app. And beforehand, she's even a little paranoid. She even rides her bike over to uh, the place where she discovers that uh, Mariah is staying, just casually, just kind of having an idea what to look out for. Kind of creepy. People are jealous. People do strange things. And sometimes it just ends right there. But it didn't. She saw that hmm, her boyfriend and Mariah together at the same time, at the same place. They go out for dinner. They go swimming. He drops her back off at the apartment at about 845. This is what sent Armstrong apparently into this jealous rage because right after he drops Mariah off after having dinner and gone for a swim Caitlin Armstrong is right there she's seen on security footage outside of the building where she was staying and she goes in and when she comes out and drives away Mariah is on the floor with several gunshot wounds. CPR was attempted, but was not successful. Mariah is dead. So, you got a homicide on your hands. Police, of course, start looking for the obvious suspects. Who around these people might have a motive to kill? You look at relationships, things of that nature. And so, of course, they do question Caitlin Armstrong. Caitlin admits in that questioning, this doesn't look good, but provided no explanation for her presence in the area when questioned by police. They release her. They didn't have enough to arrest her yet. And she knows it's on. So she goes on the run right away after that questioning may 13, she sells her black Jeep Grand Cherokee in Austin to a dealership for $12,200 and then uh, keeps running, starts going around the country, leading authorities on a bit of a chase. May 17th, the warrant is issued for her arrest and she starts going around to Texas, New York, eventually to New Jersey where she hops on a plane out of Newark. Nobody on the plane 
under her name, though. She has her sister's passport in hand. Flies to Costa Rica. And she ends up hiding out there for the rest of 43 days. Changes her name up. Goes by Aerie. Stayed at a $50 a night treehouse hostel in the area of Santa Teresa which if you're trying to hide out in Costa Rica, number one, it's not that big. And she picked a town of only 3,000 people. And people are now looking for you. A new person in a town of 3,000 people kind of stands out like a sore thumb. People who did know her there kind of described her as a little strange, a loner, wanted to be by herself, not interacting all that much, despite staying in an eight-bunk dorm. And needing some more money, she starts working as a yoga instructor and a front desk receptionist. All the while, also managing to rack up a plastic surgery bill of $6,350, as well as cutting her hair and dyeing it brown. So she literally reconstructs her face with cosmetic surgery while trying to hide out. But that was not enough to not get caught. She's arrested on June 30th for not being able to prove who she was. Her identity not coming up in databases. But they found two two of her passports in a locker, one actually hers, one the sisters uh, who she used to get on that airplane and fly all the way to Costa Rica. Uh, She now faces up to 99 years in prison. Trial is set for June 26. She appeared in court earlier today, and what was shocking about it was for the first time we got to see her face. It's always been uh, covered up with a mask or bandages or hair or something, and now we actually got to see just how different she looked, and she looks different. I think the only way I can really describe it is as if it's someone that used a lot of softening filters on your face to take away all wrinkles and all expressions. And she just looks very bland. Um, It's kind of a shame uh, because she, she was a very attractive woman now uh, looking very much uh, very toned down, if you will, to just not uh, be very, to be very expressionless. It seems with that trial coming up on June 26th, Uh, We'll see what happens. However, uh, defense attorney Rick Coffer uh, told the judge that he and his team might need to request that trial be delayed until later this year so they can secure some witnesses and other evidence for her defense. The judge said, well, you better have that request to me by May 1st. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. What a crazy story that is. I will be on Banfield tonight on News Nation talking about it uh, in the 9 o'clock central hour. If you want to learn even more and see those images uh, of her massive transformation. It's very, uh, very interesting. Again, 9 o'clock tonight on Banfield on News Nation. You can see me there. My name is Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.